Christmas can prove a stretch on the finances in the best of times, but in this shaky economy, finding the cash for presents may be doubly hard. Here with tips on shopping smart this holiday season is the watchdog on Wall Street, Chris Markowski. Good morning, Chris. Good morning. I'm like the Ebenezer Scrooge of this program. You're always bringing me on to talk about how to save money or put money away and all well, those boring things. Well, today you're just things. putting people in check. <laughs> You're putting people in check. How about that? Yeah. Because we want people to be <laughs> smart for the holiday season because the holiday season's a financial drain for a lot of people. So do you think people should be saving now for December 25th? I well, I think you should be trying to look at your expenses over the course of the year. Um, uh, what my my 10 year wedding anniversary is next year. I hear I've got to be saving for that already, from what I what I'm told. So uh, have you been? <laughs> of course. I mean that's just good that's man. Just, I am anal like that. So yeah, <laughs> if we've got stuff coming up, holidays going up, definitely you should be saving. And uh, last year we talked about this as well. Why why would you want to destroy your entire year by getting in over your head for a holiday? And Holly and I were talking about this before the break. I said the things we remember when we were kids is the actual time that you spend with your family which is most important the traditions yeah well it's the traditions and you know even when I'm setting up people's financial plans you know t time to me is the most important thing time I get to spend with my kids so I got three kids I'm deciding what I want to do for the holidays do they want to go maybe to the you know Disney Christmas thing sure. at night that'll be a part of their gift you have to measure some of these things and don't get in over your head okay let's talk about some things people can do to I guess save some money especially when it comes to extended families we talked about doing kind of a gift grab bag kind of thing yeah, this is what we do uh, between all the adults in our family is we basically we uh, you, buy, you, you pick one person out of a hat and you got to buy a gift for that person and that you know the value of that gift can't be above this amount of money which makes you obviously have to think you know it's and difficult you have to get to creative yeah. yeah I mean I do my Christmas shopping on December 24th so the yeah, last it's good for minute. me yeah. well, home loans foreclosures and clunkers oh my here to make sense of it all is our financial wizard the watchdog on Wall Street Chris Markowski good morning Chris good morning I, you guys good I need to be the Grim Reaper I got to have like a big sickle I should come yeah. in with like a hood. Yeah, because whenever you're here. on, it's always to tell us about how horrible <laughs> things are. But look, you're just honest. That's all. You're just telling it like it is. Uh, now, we had a bit of good news. Um, mm -hmm. we, we saw an uptick in the number of home loans. Uh, and so you think, oh, OK, that's good. Interest rates are coming down. More people are applying for home loans. So we're coming out of this whole housing mess, right? Wrong. No, yeah, Key even mentioned earlier in, in the news she was talking about how uh, one foreclosure every 13 seconds. There's See, a nice. Key, I pay attention when you're talking. See that? <laughs> yeah, usually you associate, they always have those numbers like, you know, the, as far as, you know, world poverty or uh, auto deaths. You know, now it's foreclosures. One every 13 seconds in America. Yeah, and a lot of these banks, quite honestly, um, and I'm, I'm experiencing it down here in Florida as we, we go and take a look around, a lot of banks aren't even foreclosing on homes. You got empty houses there that they just don't want to put this piece of paper on their balance sheet yet. It is a supply and demand thing and we came up with our plan here last year. We said let's invest in wrecking balls and bulldozers and it'd be more effective and I still think that that's the case. It's great that mortgage uh, people are applying for more mortgages but that's because the rate went below 5%. Right. Refinance your house. Pay less a month to be able to save more money, pay down more of the debt. That's great. And, it, and I think for the folks at home, it, it, you, if you can do that, if your credit's good enough where you can refinance Finance, that's a smart move. Otherwise, it, because banks don't have a lot of money to lend because of the problems you just described, renting is, again, always a good option. Do not be, feel like you're forced into buying something that you can't afford. Absolutely not. I mean, I try to take, I don't consider my home an investment. Uh, that's how I always have gone into it, always handle it. I consider it a bill every single month, much like a car right. bill or an electric bill. If you handle it like that, you'll be okay. All right, speaking of the bills, we got to talk about yeah. the Cash for Clunkers program, talk about the Church of Unintended Consequences. Uh, a quarter of all people that took advantage of the Cash for Clunkers program are now defaulting on those loans. Who wants to make a bet out there that uh, we're going to start hearing stories about the evil car salesman that pushed people into buying cars that they couldn't <laughs> afford? Anybody out there going to think, see, that's kind of a story I, coming I, soon I with the guarantee you, you yeah, that more it'll, likely. Some legislator yeah. will, 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 will talk about <laughs> 25, that. They said about 25% of the people wish they hadn't done it. We're also taking a look at the fact that a lot of these cars, they had to be destroyed. They had put them to sleep, euthanized the cars. Well then you can't use those things for car parts for older cars, which is a problem. Messes up the used uh, car lot market. It's, 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 uh, okay, once again, Chris, you are a married man. Yes, I am. Okay. And so what attracted you to your wife? Oh, wow. Now you're putting me on the spot and she's probably watching this too. Now, okay, she was that's just good. She was beautiful. Met her at a uh, restaurant in New York City. Uh, just complete luck. 
Okay, but she's a smart lady? Yeah, she's very bright. Okay, well, they're saying that if a guy wants to live a long, happy, healthy life, he has a better chance of doing so if he marries an intelligent woman. Yeah, you need brains mm -hmm. for that. Apparently, healthy. she is, and, and healthy. Yeah, uh, apparently, women, if you marry a woman who is smarter, and you know, don't forget, don't worry about the looks and all that stuff, it helps you live longer. I keep Probably because she knows skit. what to do. You remember that movie Coming to, to America? Yes. yes. Oh, that movie. The wife there at the beginning, and he was saying the same exact thing. I wanted a girl that I wanted from her intellect as well, and that's true. Makes I mean, sense. you got to have conversations. From time to time. Absolutely. Helps. Of course, ladies, you're not out of the picture. If you're looking for the right guy, researchers are saying you can't find him if you're taking birth control. It says birth control affects your hormones, of course, but it alters your sense of smell and you can't sniff out the right man for you. Do <laughs> so you buy of, this stuff? Yeah, so all of a sudden women are getting together with guys that they normally wouldn't even have an interest in. Yeah, yeah but there was, I don't know if you also read in that story as well, and that just came out this morning. The, the show prep never ends here at this program. Oh. Uh, <laughs> they also said that it's turning women off to the traditional masculine man and putting them on to the sensitive ponytail types. So the you got sensitive <laughs> ponytail types. So if you have a ponytail and you're a man, you're sensitive. I thought you called it a mullet. Exactly. <laughs> Is it just the mullet? All right. All right. So moving on here. Let me ask you. Um, what do you think about all these ads? And these models have been airbrushed, and they look fake. They look, you know, paper thin. What do you think about that? Should there be a disclaimer or something on there? You know, I, I've gone to some of these runway shows and whatnot and seen some of these women, and, Ooh, and quite honestly, you? and quite. <laughs> I mean, they're they're not they're not great. I mean, they're sticks. Yeah. I mean, there's not. I'm, I don't know what what the allure is and why women. I mean, obviously these ads are for women. They're not for men. Yeah, and sometimes why they do send women a bad feel like that is the ideal? Girls. Take a look at this picture. Sense. Look at this picture. This is a look Ralph Lauren ad, and it's almost it, comical. Yeah, uh, and at first I thought it was Olive like oil. some sort of a cartoon or whatever because mm -hmm. her waist is smaller than her head, and yeah. then look at her legs or whatnot. Now we also have the real picture of this uh, model. Take a look at this. This is what she actually. How much better she, and she looks. looks. great a, like that. A thousand times. But what is it? You, I mean, you're going to have to. This is my I, question it, to women. It, it, what hey, is trust it? Me, it? Why it do they have so like this? The thing that makes me mad is that a lot of young girls, they battle with eating disorder. They don't really know who they are. They struggle with their image. And they see images like this in magazines mm -hmm. and ads. And they're like, I want to be like that. And it's not even real. It's phony. It's called Photoshop. Exactly. And guys don't like it. So. Yeah. There you yeah. go. It kind of defeats the purpose.